In this topic, we're going to look at an introduction to transport in animals and plants. So we're going to look at why do large organisms need a transport system? What are the features of transport systems? We're going to look at transport systems in plants and animals, the double circulatory system, just to recap the surface area to volume ratio, and how large organisms are adapted to increase the surface area to volume ratio. Transport over short distances, such as between adjacent cells, is done by diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion or active transport. So here you can see the different types of transport into a cell. You've got passive diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and active transport. So why do large organisms need a transport system? All organisms need to exchange materials between themselves and the environment. In small organisms, for example, the little cell on the left there, this exchange takes place over the surface of the body. However, if you increase in size, the surface area to volume ratio decreases. So you need a special exchange surface to absorb nutrients and gases and to remove excretory products. These exchange surfaces are located in specific regions in the organism. For example, your lungs have got alveoli. And a transport system is needed to take the materials from the cells that need them or produce them to or from the exchange surfaces that absorb or remove them. For example, oxygen diffuses through the alveoli into the blood and the blood carries the oxygen to the cells that are respiring. So what are the features of transport systems? Well, they need a suitable medium to carry materials, for example, blood. This comprises a lot of water which dissolves substances readily. They need a form of mass flow transport in which the transport medium is moved around in bulk over large distances. A closed system of tubular vessels that contains the transport medium and forms a branching network to distribute it along specific routes to all parts of the organism. For example, your blood vessels. They also need a mechanism for moving the transport medium within the vessels. This requires a pressure difference between one part of the system and another. So animals use muscular contraction either of the body muscles, for example on your legs, when your leg muscle contracts it helps move the blood, or of a specialized pumping organ, for example the heart. Plants don't have muscles, so they use evaporation of water or differences in solute concentrations. And then finally, a mechanism to maintain mass flow in one direction. For example, valves in veins or valves in your heart. Right, let's have a look at transport systems in plants. So plants don't need to transport as many materials as animals do. They don't need to transport respiratory gases in bulk because most gases they use or make are produced or required by the leaves, which has a large surface area. These gases can diffuse directly through the stomata. Plants don't move from place to place, so energy requirements are low, so they don't use as much ATP, and thus don't need as many respiratory gases. In light, the plants photosynthesize and produce oxygen which is used in respiration. And most photosynthetic tissues are near the surface, so diffusion can meet the needs of cells. So plants mainly need to transport water and mineral salts from the roots to 
the aerial parts. And they also need to transport sugars from the regions of manufacture, which we call the sources, to regions where they're used, called the sink. Plants don't possess contractile cells, so they depend on passive modes of transport. So water and mineral salts is transported in the xylem, and sugars and amino acids are transported in the phloem. Transport systems in animals. Animals have got circulatory systems that move the transport medium, the blood, around the body. So smaller animals, for example insects, use an open blood system where blood flows freely over the cells and tissues. Large organisms have got a closed blood system where blood is confined to the vessels. A muscular pump called the heart circulates the blood around the body. Just to recap, double circulatory system um, occurs in mammals and birds. So the blood, having had its pressure reduced as it's forced over the lung capillaries, is returned to the heart to boost its pressure before being circulated to the rest of the body. This assists the rapid delivery of material, which is necessary as birds and mammals have a higher rate of metabolism due to their constant high temperature. Can you remember what surface area to volume ratio is? Well, exchange takes place at the surface of an organism, but the materials absorbed are used by the cells that mostly make up its volume. For exchange to be effective, the surface area must be large compared to the volume. So what do I mean by this? Well, if you have a look at these three boxes, the pink, the blue, and the yellow box. Notice how when you increase the surface area, for example, the small box, the pink box, and you increase the surface area to the yellow box, the volume also increases, but not, not as much. What about the surface area to volume ratio? Notice how the pink box, the smallest box, has the highest surface area to volume ratio. But the biggest box, the yellow box, has got the smallest surface area to volume ratio. This is important when considering exchange surfaces. So protoctists have a large surface area compared to their volume. And this is sufficient for exchange over their surfaces. Larger organisms have got a large volume, but it would take a long time for substances to get to the middle of the organism from their surface. So how are large organisms adapted to increase surface area to volume ratio? Well, some organisms have a flattened shape, for example, this flatworm. This means that no cell is ever far from the surface. Or, organisms have specialized exchange surfaces with a large area compared to the volume, so large surface area to volume ratio. For example, in your lungs, you've got the alveoli and gills in fish. Right, in summary, we looked at why large organisms need a transport system, what are the features of transport systems, transport systems in plants, animals, the double circulatory system, surface area to volume ratio, and how large organisms are adapted to increase the surface area to volume ratio. And that concludes our lesson, the end.